Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Today we're gonna to be doing LSU versus Oklahoma, college football prep preview for the game this Saturday. Guys, I'm really excited. We got the number one team versus the number four team. Many people thinking Oklahoma has no chance. LSU's gonna blow them out of the water. I think we got like a 12 and a half point spread in favor of LSU. So a lot here to discuss, a lot of trash talking going on. So I'm excited to get into this. Now as a Texas fan, I have a unique perspective having played against both of these teams and seeing, well actually I didn't play the games, but seeing my team play against both of these teams, obviously LSU came into Austin and, and defeated us in, in, in that early season game. And then we lost in the Cotton Bowl to Oklahoma uh, later in the season. So how you know my perspective coming from here I, I, I think the big 12 again and this happens every bowl season for whatever reason it's underestimated right and, and, and a lot of people look at us as a joke and, and and we saw this as texas fans heading into our game against lsu early in the season especially when we were healthy and we matched up well top 10 matchup and and they came in all, again, I think I've, I've given nothing, them nothing but credit. They've had a phenomenal season. The LSU Tigers, they've beaten some of the best teams in the country. They have the best resume in the country and a, a, a very, very strong number one. But OU has been as, as consistent as any team in the country the last few years. And they have a, a, you know, one of the best offensive mind coaches in the Lincoln Riley. You, you give me a Jalen Hurts, who by the way has never lost to LSU and has been, you know, was was <laughs> finished, whether you like it or not, he did finish second place in the Heisman voting and, and a much, much improved OU defense. Now there's a couple factors that have kind of changed this game around a little bit. First, we have a few suspensions. The big one being Ronnie Perkins, who's one of OU's best pass rushers. Uh, been a phenomenal player, gave us a lot of headaches in our Texas game and a guy who brings a lot of speed off the edge but also played very good contain. He was one of the beneficiaries of OU moving to Alex Grinch's scheme and, and, and having that aggressive pass rush that they've had all year long. And, and when you're going against a Joe Burrow, an LSU offense that is as multiple and as dynamic as any offense in the country, you need all hands on deck. So for them to be losing him, and then the other brother, Darian Turner Yell, is also out. I believe he hurt his shoulder in bowl practice. So when anybody you're losing, that affects this, that impacts this game. Now on the LSU side, Clyde Edward Elaire is questionable with the hamstring issue. I don't I believe as of now he hasn't really practiced. They say he's a game time decision. That's huge. He's one of the best running backs in the country, first team all SEC. And I do believe as, as talented as the younger backs are on LSU, uh, specifically Ty Davis Price, there is a drop off there from Edwards Hilaire, especially what he gives LSU in the passing game. The, one of the biggest developments I saw from LSU throughout the season that I didn't see too much of in our game against them from a Texas perspective was how Clyde was utilized in the pass game, wheel routes, screens, blazing out to the flats. He was very, very effective. Even some of the running back choice routes, getting over the middle, matched up against linebackers. And with Joe Burrow's field vision, decision making, and accuracy, whatever the defense presented, it, it was just another layer to defend uh, once they really started implementing Clyde into the pass game. Will those backup running backs have that same level of effectiveness uh, against Oklahoma, we'll see. Now, I will say this, when you look at the amount of trash talking that is going on from the LSU side, and you, Jamar Chase is, to me, he did deserve the, the Belitnikoff Award over C.D. Lamb. Uh, and, and that's the other thing, all these matchups with you know some of these guys, you know, C.D. Lamb versus a Derek Stingley Jr. and all the, I'll get into all that, but Jamar Chase, the lack of humility in his comments and pointing out, and some of you LSU fans, I know you guys are going to come on here and talk about, well, if it's true, you know, why can't he say it? You know, and the lack of respect for opponent. How many times have we seen this over the course of sports where a big bat wolf comes to the game, filling themselves a lot of time off? LSU went through this whole murderer's row, including Georgia in the SEC championship game, 
but they were playing every week, and now they've gotten a month off. Now Oklahoma, Alex Grinch, Lincoln Riley have a month to get ready for what they're doing. And just all it takes is a few wrinkles and for you to come out a little slow and sluggish and have a little bit of rust. And the next thing you know, you're in a dogfight. We see this happen every year. So I think one of the things, one of the keys to this game is how this game starts off well, how it, how it starts off for both teams and both offenses in particular. Because last year we saw Kyler Murray and this OU offense completely stall against Alabama. And they didn't wake, and by the time they got going, because they ended up getting their yards and getting their numbers, but by the time they got going, two of them had already gone, because two of them started sharp and they already gotten way ahead, right, and built up that margin. One of the things I look at now, OU coming off of that game and saying, look, we've got, we think we can get back to the playoffs, but we've got to fix this defense. And we've got to, we've got to have a defense to give us a chance because we know we can generate points. I, 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 I look at this a little bit differently for OU. I think one of the things they'll try to lean on is time of possession and ball control with their run game. Now, I know Stevenson was also one of the brothers that got suspended, but I have a Kennedy Brooks, I have a Jalen Hurts that gives them a lot of advantages on trying to control clock. It's not your traditional OU team that you saw with a Baker Mayfield or a Kyler Murray where they're throwing the ball all over the lot. They are still very, very proficient in the throw game. But it's a lot of orbit motion, a lot of screens, a lot of you know fake wheel route screen, a lot of fake wheel and then throw it up the sideline. But everything is more designated, especially off of RPO and countering on what Jalen does well in the throw game. We also have to factor in Jalen Hurts' familiarity with the opponents, especially on LSU's defense. I know LSU has transformed on offense thanks to one Joe Brady and Joe Burrow and the mind melt. But defensively, Jalen Hurts has competed against a lot of these guys before and has had success in the past against these guys. One of the things we look at is, can he be a true dual threat against the LSU defense? And LSU fans, be honest with yourselves, and I know they've improved the last half of the year, but that, that, that kid on Ole Miss ate y'all up in the run game from a quarterback run perspective. How do we defend against that if you're LSU? What are some things you have in place? Because we, the Lincoln Riley is probably the best play caller you'll see as a defense this year. This isn't going to be, you know, what you saw with Georgia where they're going to come out <laughs> in 21 personnel the whole game and try to, you know, look like the 1980s Dallas Cowboys. That's not going to be the case. You will see a very, very dynamic OU offense, and especially if they're able to start better because I know Lincoln and them are focusing on starting better and trying to get a better effort from the defense in this playoff game. What's LSU's counter to that? You guys are going to have to show up and play football at LSU. You can't just roll in here and blow out Oklahoma. I don't see that happening. I don't. I think it's going to be a very competitive football game. I am picking LSU to win 38-34. to uh, I, But I do think LSU will be humbled a little bit. And I do think that there will be a little bit of rust um, with the LSU offense, especially if Clyde Edwards-Alaire is not playing. Uh, but... Look, there's some phenomenal matchups here. This is a game where NFL, both, both of these playoff games, Clemson, Ohio State, as well as LSU, Oklahoma, where scouts will be littered throughout watching these matchups. The opportunities that they will get to see a C.D. Lamb versus a Derek Stingley Jr. The opportunities they will get to see a C.D. Lamb even versus a Christian Fulton or Charleston Rambo. You know, who are some of, who are some of the other guys that we're not talking about right now that could, excuse me, that could potentially play a role or have a factor in this game. Uh, one of the guys I think on LSU's offense that we haven't talked en about enough, Thaddeus Moss. I think that's a guy who could hurt OU down the seams, especially with the absence of the safety being gone and the amount of attention that Chase Jefferson will get underneath and, and, and Marshall on the other side. I look for a guy like Thaddeus Moss who's also quietly had a really, really nice year to, to, to play bully ball with OU in the secondary at times. Um, you know, and then Joe Burrow, the you know, been the best player all year in the country outside of, you know, well, I think he's been the best player all year. If you want to debate with Chase Young, go ahead. Can Alex Grinch affect him at all? Can he bother him? Can he show him something he hasn't seen to where he hesitates a little bit or throws a questionable football? Because Joe Burrow does take shots. He is a very aggressive player, as accurate as he, as he is. You know, he's, he's 
you know, blown everyone away with his completion percentages throughout the season. But I, I, I look at this game and I, I just, I've seen this before where guys do come out a month off and they're just a tick off. Um, we saw this last year, like I said, with Kyler Murray. Could Joe Burrow and them come out and be just a slight tick off and OU uses that momentum? But the thing is too, Oh, you can't say they haven't been motivated with all the with the disrespect that LSU's thrown out there. Some of the disrespect in the media with them saying being dismissive of OU, saying this is really a three-team playoff. There are only three teams that deserve to be here, and and OU got in by default. You know, how does Lincoln Riley and this this bunch from Norman channel that energy to compete in this football game? I'm excited to see it. Playing against both teams, I know there's holes on both sides. And, and, and LSU has improved since we played them in Austin, especially on defense. But there's holes and advantages that OU can channel, especially with a guy like a Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, by the way, is due for a better game because he struggled uh, uh, the last few games in Big 12 play. I know they had some miraculous comebacks and, 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 and you know, were able to get by a very, very underrated Baylor team twice. But I think Jalen Hurts is due for, for you know, a signature performance, at least to keep his team in the football game and be the leader that we've, we've seen him be throughout the last you know, four or five years of college football here. So a uh, matchup, both of these playoff games are dynamite, and I'm excited to see them. Like I said before, I have LSU winning 38-34, advancing to the national championship. But do not be surprised if the brothers from Baton Rouge get humbled. Now, I know their ultimate goal is to play in the state of Louisiana in the Superdome for that national championship, and they're one game away from getting to that point. Uh, but Coach O got to keep his, you know, and he's done a great job of this all year. It's not the first time that LSU has run their mouths, and they've done a good job. And some of that, maybe even that's what gets them going. We will see, but I'm excited to be there and watch this game. And guys, I would love to hear everyone's comments. OU fans, Texas fans that have seen us play both of these teams, and LSU fans as well. But I appreciate you guys, and uh, make sure you subscribe and, and hit that like button. Thank you.